over 15 minutes, we were praying around the clock, and being a 24-hour prayer line, prayer was being offered. Last Thursday, you know it was the national day of prayer, right? Praise God. And while there at the conference office, I uh, said to Elder Parkinson, I'm going to my office for about two minutes, and I shall return. Loving Lord be with those that are texting the pastor even now. I hope there are no emergencies. Pour out your spirit on your children here and around the world, we pray. Since 1972, I have had the joy each national day of prayer to pray with the presidents of the United States and uh, the governors, uh, the mayors, and other elected officials. I did not hear anything from the White House having new administration, so I got in contact with the White House to see if Thursday gone would have been a day that I would be getting a call from uh, the White House for prayer. I was told that our present president does not want prayer and that the administration is doing a new thing. And of course, you know that last Thursday, he signed a pack with the Lyndon Bain Johnson, and here we see, or we should understand, we are losing more of our religious liberty every day, and we don't fully grasp that. The National Day of Prayer, since 1952, President Eisenhower asked Congress to pass a law that one day, one day in America, Anyone and everyone will be free to pray and turn back to God. So on that day, you can go on any train and bus. You can go anywhere and pray. You cannot do it any other day. You can be locked up for praying in New York City, in America. I was thrown in prison in Virginia for distributing tracts everywhere I stopped years ago and for prayer. Family of God, we are living in such a time. And as I came back, Ella Parkinson said, your phone has been ringing. And when I checked, I saw that uh, Dr. Wilson had called. And so I called him back. And I said, how is our girl? What is happening? I'm not hearing anything. And then there was silence. And then he said, we have lost her. I said, what do you mean? He said, she died. And then the silence came again. And I just fell on my knees there in the lobby at the conference office thanking God for her life and his truth. Not knowing what was taking place at the White House that day. Family of God, we are nearer home than we realized. And on this day where many are celebrating Mother's Day, it could be our last. And I pray that we will set our house in order. In shock and in denial, as we almost got to the house, this is what took us to the door when I was still hoping Dioranda would open the door for us. I would see her face, and when I saw uh, Dr. Wilson and he hugged us, I'm still looking, and I said, I still cannot believe until 
I see the grave. And then when I went up to where she would be buried, it really sunk in. She's gone. This song, please. And the waves continue tossing me from the storm I call his name for relief from things. Every one of us in this room today is going through some storms. Now so quietly it comes. And I pray that quietly now as we look to the moon. Accept that he's going to give you strength. Though he does so much. Sometimes we don't even realize what he's doing. And many times we take him for granted. always Your storm could be sickness. It could be financial difficulties. And if you're here and your wife or husband is here, even if there's a strain in your relationship, hold his hands. Put your arms around her. Touch her. Look in her eyes. She's got them closed. Nudge her. Look in those baby brown. Look in the eyes of Jesus Christ, right, Sister Mirage? In the midst of the storm. What tomorrow's hold they hold. Joy and sadness come. Lord, take your G-rated women today. Some storms will come my way. In this X-rated world that we live be sure. I will not be lost. No, we won't. There will never come a time that will. Loving Lord, it's not often our first lady and our pastor here gets a chance to hold hands together in church. And I am so glad today they can cuddle up to each other. You know the storms in their lives. And I pray that you will give them that peace. And that as you embrace them anew today, all the officers of this church, every visitor, as we call on you, as you show your love and mercy, may we listen to that still small voice that gives us that peace. Loving Lord, I pray that I will not be seen but you will be heard for the little time that we will spend together. Be with Maimon and Zebulun even now, and people that are gathering there for worship and your worship service around the world. Sabbath is always a glorious time. Is, what time is that? 
sure? Loving Lord, somebody's saying, I hope she's going to be sure today. Who just said amen? They all said amen, Lord. So help me and help them, we pray. Amen. You know, I, I want to thank you for this invitation. I never thought I would make it, but I'm just also leaving my uh, church that I popped in before they readjusted uh, their service. A beautiful lady that I met through prayer got baptized uh, there, and uh, there's a lot of sickness in the church. And when Elder Mirage called me and asked me about coming here, I have a love for East New York. I have a passion for the lives. You know, when I look back and I think of Sister Mitchell, how many of you folks remember Sister Mitchell? Only a few of you. Loving Lord, so you can tell all these folks are old. But old age gives wisdom. Sister Mitchell lived in this place that I got entrance into any house that I knocked on the door. And many souls have been saved for each hand that was lifted. Give them that zest and that strength to go the extra mile, I pray. Amen. And I am going to be short. And with that smile, Lord, I read yesterday from the book Evangelism. How many of you have read this book? How many of you are reading it right now? If you go on the conference website, you see a daily reading from the book Evangelism. And it says in here that one soul, one soul, is of more value to God than entire worlds. And I would want to encourage women, G-rated women, to so live that God can use you to introduce at least one soul to him this year. Would you like to do that, ladies? The Bible tells us that there was a flood in Genesis chapter 6. And because of that flood, can I walk down here, please? Flood that was over the Within that, that flood, God gave warning to his children. And God is warning all of us today. Some of us are taking heed. Some of us are not taking heed. The door of mercy soon will be closed. And when that door is closed, it will be closed forever. Now are preached for a hundred and twenty years, right, baby girl? And God brought things to an end. And when the instinct kicked in, the animals, the unclean animals, two by two went in, and the clean ones, seven by seven, right, Pastor? Went in. People watched. What's going on? God was speaking. Man was not listening. And when the time had come, the hands of God closed that ark. 
And when the rain began to fall, when it was time, the door was shut, many started coming, but it was too late. God has a work for women to do. He has a work for men to do. And it is only as we are faithful to him that that work will be completed. Let's go back to that scripture reading. Loving Lord, as our eyes go back, as G-rated women in this X-rated world, I just pray that we will do your bidding. Amen. Who has the scripture reading? Who read it before? Who read it before? She read it before? Read it again, baby. Loving Lord, she's moving kind of slow. I'm trying to break the record here. Today. Gonna get you out of this church early. Did you say amen under your breath? Here, O Giving him his wife. He's a little slow today because he knows I'm going to let you get out of here. 
Revelation 22, 11. God is saying, the day's coming. I'm about to close the door. Since 1844, Jesus has moved to the most holy place. And he's there pleading the case for every youth, every boy and girl. And when that door is closed, your destiny will be sealed. My destiny will be sealed. It's either we are saved or we are lost. I want to challenge my women. Our president has asked us as ministers to work with our churches, work with our people, and we would love to see 10,000 souls, one for Christ in Northeastern Conference. Do I think that is possible? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Carmen, just stand up. I met Carmen while conducting a health class. She was a Roman Catholic mixed up New Age person, Muslim, sir, through health ministries. It's the first time we opened in Northeastern to anyone that was not an Adventist that they could take the class. But before she even ended, she was baptized by the president of the greater New York Conference. And even now, dear Lord, I ask that you will be with G. Earl Knight, our union president and his beautiful wife. I pray that as you lead and guide them, and as you have candidates like uh, Carmen, that all of us as your women and your men in this X-rated world, will do a yeoman's job for you. I am glad that this daughter of yours is in the faith, although she got lost this morning and made me late coming here. Forgive her, Lord. And bless East New York, as I'm going to let them out soon. Dioranda was laying on the bed. I'm making the appeal. Could you play, I will follow thee, my Savior, for me, please? Thou hast shed thy blood for me. And though all men should forsake me, by thy grace, I'll follow thee. She had flatlined. The doctors came in and pr pronounced... Dyeronder dead. She's laying down. Flatlined half an hour. And Maven said that there were two women, G-rated women, Bertha and Margaret. And they stood there and they were calling on God to put back life in her body. Put back life in her body. And I ask you here to remember Elizabeth White in your prayers. She needs your prayer. She comes back to me because when I was in Barbados years ago, she called the conference for prayer and the president called me in Barbados where her mother-in-law was who had been pronounced dead. And when we prayed for her and when God touched her, she opened her eyes and gave Sister Mendes, put your hands up, five. God is still in the miracle business. And we've got to put aside our worldliness. As women of God, we must live and act.
as though we are ready for the kingdom. At any time, death might come. And Doc said as those ladies were praying, the action started again. And he said, will you resuscitate her? And they said, we cannot. She has been pronounced dead. And he said that his wife took her right hand and clapped her heart, pronounced dead. And she took her left hand and she reached out to her husband and grabbed his hand, looked in his eyes, and her head said, I wanted to kiss her. So he said, let me resuscitate her. And for an hour and a half, he was thanking God for the life of his wife. Thanking God with that kiss, an hour and a half. I prayed with him this morning. God is going to put a lot of us to sleep if we're ready. In order to save us. And I ask you right now. Are you ready to be saved? Can we sing a stanza of that song? I will follow thee, my Savior. Do we know that song? Today, if you are here, there's no guarantee. I spoke to Dironda a few days before. I plan to take Aunt Jessie down to spend some time, but that will not happen. Are you putting God on hold? If you are, let go and let him hold you today. Don't be afraid to die, but make sure you die in him. Mothers, you are here. Don't give up training your children as Jesus trains you. Wives, sometimes tough and rough, with our husbands. Do I get an amen there? I don't want no single. I don't want no single lady saying amen. I want wives to respond. Amen. This morning at four o'clock, I was dropping a widow home. I say a widow, she's actually divorced. Her husband divorced her. I'm here waiting for I will follow thee, my Savior. Married to, to a man, hoping that the marriage would last a lifetime. But he chose to divorce her. I will no 86-year-old should be going home alone. I say to you today, cast your lot with Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Yes, my Lord. I'll follow thee. If you're here today and you're not following the Lord the way you should, there's no guarantee for tomorrow. And as Jesus shed his blood for you, give everything over to him. And even if you are forsaken, be determined by God's grace to follow Jesus. Loving Lord, go on, Pastor. You know the roughness in the lives of your children. And as I walk down these aisles, take the hearts of your children. Keep us in love with you. May we be determined as your women, even when it gets rough and tough, even if we're forsaken by everyone. 
by your grace. And I'm going to ask you, would you ask the Lord to help you to be a soul winner? Would you ask the Lord? He will make you one. On Wednesday, I had a call from a gentleman whom I met four years ago. Someone had died and I'd gone to the funeral and he, this gentleman, uh, I ended up visiting a, a doctor and I saw this lovely Caucasian gentleman in the doctor's office and I sat next to him. I'm talking about asking God to make you a soul winner. I saw a lady push a wheelchair with a gentleman in and I'm saying, Lord, if that's her husband, I hope she's tender and sensitive to him. Because being a caregiver is very demanding, very hard. And many times caregivers die even before the one they're taking care of. Somebody here is worn out today and the Lord knows. I went over to that lady to ask the very thing, is this your husband? While I'm praying, I hope he's grateful. And I found out that they were married for many, many years. I went back to sit next to that gentleman and he says, what's your problem? And I said, I really don't have a problem. He said, why are you talking to yourself? I said, I'm talking to God and I'm talking to him about you too. Do you have a problem? He says, hell do I ever. And he says, I don't like niggers, so I'm not going to share it with you. And I said, Lord, be with your son, whom you love at this time with his problem. You see, some of us are combative, and we want to react to what people say, react to Jesus. The doctor had just given him weeks, three weeks at least, to live. He had so many complications. And the doctor said to him, you must change your diet today. Today. You must be off all flesh, all dairy. No sugar. And he's fussing with the doctor. Nobody is living without these things. And that is still alive. And then he opened this book that spoke about an eight weeks cholesterol cure. He says, look here on page 11. I'm reading this and he's talking about a group of people by the name of Seventh-day Adventists. He said, have you ever heard of any Seventh-day Adventists? I said, can I say I am one? Amen. Then he looks back here, he's talking about the Adventists and he's saying to eat like dress like, live like. And when I told him that at my age, I had not consumed meat in my life, that was an answer to the statement that the doctor made to him. He went back to the doctor and said he just met a woman that does not eat flesh. He asked me if I could go in with, a uh, with him to see the doctor. He was not excited to see a black woman, a G-rated woman at that. And I said, can I come home with you? He said, come home with me. I said, you see, I'd asked him if he was... And he said, my wife don't like niggers. I said, we will talk about that at another time. But I ended up going to his house that day. That man, four years later, he's still alive. Changed his diet that day. He's not only alive, but he's now a seventh day Adventist.
Ladies, ask God to lead you to souls. If I had time, we would share. Pastor, can I come back again? So, Lord, the promise will stand. I now turn things back over to the pastor as I sit down. Dear God, I ask you a special favor upon Sister Pat. She's told us that she's traveled all night. I just ask God that you will renew her strength. Thank you for bringing her safely to us today to share. I pray God that we have all listened attentively, but have imbued the words that she has spoken to us. May it impact our lives positively, we pray now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So it says, Pat, here at East New York, we have been studying the book Last Day Events at our prayer meeting. We talked about that executive order that the president signed. Yes. Yes. And so here at East New York, we are trying to prepare ourselves not just to get rich and live happily here and now. We are trying to prepare ourselves for the soon return of Jesus. And I want to say to you as we go today, I want to say to you what I said to you a couple of weeks ago. Keep your eyes open. Yes, All of that stuff that's going on around. Yes. Don't walk around as though you're blind and you're not intelligent and you don't understand what is happening in our society. When you see these things begin to happen, the book says, look up. How many of you are ready for Jesus to come? You're anxious? Amen. Thank you so much for ministering to us today. I think the closing hymn will be announced and then we'll have the benediction. This afternoon, there is a, an AY program, I am told. There is an AY program. Let me thank uh, Brother Thomas and the, the men's group. I think they are going to host uh, the mothers and ladies downstairs for Sabbath dinner. And then there's an afternoon program. Next Sabbath, uh, we are going to have the Pathfinders and Adventurers. Uh, so, uh, Adventurers, you are part of next Sabbath's program. You are going to lead. Thank you. God bless you all. In Jesus' name, amen. to thank Sister Pat for our G-rated women in an R-rated world. Our closing hymn will be 294. When you, when you find that number, you can stand. Power in the blood, power in the blood. 
Precious blood of the 